Hi, I thought I'd do a very timely video on air filters here. Uh, this one that I've had in my lab for many years, and it's pretty much the duck's guts in terms of uh, room air filters, or HEPA filters as they're called. Now this was prompted by uh, a video Fran Blanche just uh, released today, and where she shows like a really crappy brand air filter. So I'll link in that video at the uh, end and down below, check it out. So I thought I'd contrast that by uh, just talking about uh, air filters uh, in general, what to look out for when you're buying one and things like that, and show you one of these uh, top of the range ones. Now we're going to the details of what makes a good HEPA uh, air filter in a minute, and we'll take a look at my uh, Blue Air. This is an, a Blue Air 650E model. I believe it's uh, discontinued or it's been improved uh, since then, but this is pretty much one of the uh, Rolls-Royce uh, air filters you can get on the market, and we'll go into and explain why. So yes, this is very uh, pertinent with the virus going around at the moment, and you might want to filter out uh, airborne bacteria and viruses, and just generally uh, keep a like a healthy air, especially if you work indoors like I do in a lab here, especially with uh, soldering. Of course, uh, you have to have your own local uh, filters when you solder, but uh, we use all sorts of chemicals and other sorts of stuff in like a lab environment. So it's pretty important to take care of your health and have a really good air air purifier and high volume one uh, like we've got here. Now I mentioned these are known as uh, HEPA air filters. HEPA is actually uh, one of the uh, standards. It stands for high efficiency particulate air and there's various uh, levels. This is actually what's called a H14 HEPA filter and that means it will filter out 99.97% out roughly of uh, particulate matter above uh, 3 micro but this one's actually, uh, this blue air model can actually do down to 0.1 micron, which is actually important for uh, viruses, and in particular, the uh, coronavirus that we're talking about recently, because that's about the size of those particular viruses, around about the 0.1 uh, micron mark. So yes, a filter like this will actually uh, filter out viruses and other bacteria in the air. That's one of their jobs. But there are various standards. There are ones higher. They go into the U standards that are higher than this, but basically this is the high H14. If you want a really good HEPA air purifier, you should be looking for a H14 rating, all that 99.97% uh, filtration. Now, every air purifier will have an inlet port and an outlet port. In this particular one, the inlet ports are uh, down the bottom here on the sides or all around, and the outlets are here, up the top here, and also on this side here. Now, there are two different uh, technologies used to actually uh, purify air, or one complements uh, the other. We'll talk about in a minute, but basically, every air purifier should contain uh, filters like this. In this particular case, this one's actually got uh, three on either side, and we'll go into the uh, types of uh, filter in a minute. But uh, basically, it's basically a big fan in there that uh, sucks the air in from the inlet port and then forces it through the filter material and then out into the air. And the HEPA filter itself is basically the effectiveness of this filter and you're just forcing air through the particular filter material like this, and that's what uh, captures all the stuff. But there's an additional technology uh, in air filters, which this particular has, one has, which we'll take a look at, which is uh, what's known as an electrostatic filter as well. So basically what that does is that it's inside, and we'll take a look at it in a sec, it actually charges up uh, the particulate matter in the air. It's basically just a high voltage uh, probe tips that actually uh, uh, energizes the air and so it's effectively like a negative ion generator basically and that uh, charges up the particles. Charge particles actually stick to the particular uh, material in here so it just increases the effectiveness rather than just trying to force the particles through they'll electrostatically couple themselves to the material itself. So if you combine those uh, two technologies, both the uh, HEPA air filter material and the electrostatic technology, it becomes really effective. So if you're looking to buy a good air filter, it should have both. But there is a trap for young players in the electrostatic part of these uh, particular types of air filters in that uh, when these ion generators in that they can actually generate ozone and ozone's actually bad for you. So who remembers the hole in the ozone layer? 
player crisis. Geez, when was that? Back in the 80s or something like that? Anyway, that was a big deal, but uh, nothing like what we're going through at the moment. It's just nuts. Anyway, ozone, well, we need ozone up there in the upper atmosphere. It's bad down here if you breathe it in. And these uh, ion generators can actually produce ozone. It depends on the particular type and it's, uh, you know, how it does it, how much ozone it actually produces. And uh, we'll talk about that in particular, this model in a minute. But yeah, it's bad for you. And there are health standards for a maximum amounts of ozone uh, in the air. So if you've got a poorly designed uh, air filter that they just don't care about how much ozone it produces, that can actually damage your health. So not good. And Fran, in her video, she didn't want the ozone generator. Um, so she just uh, went in there and disconnected the uh, ion high voltage uh, plug from inside so that it wouldn't uh, generate any. <laughs> so yeah, I don't blame her at all. So I'll show you what you should be looking for in a good air filter, and I highly recommend these uh, Blue Air ones there. Pretty much the Rolls Royce, if you can afford it, they are not cheap uh, by any stretch of the imagination. Like you can get like a real El Cheapo for one for like one fifth the price or something like that. But if you really take uh, your air purification uh, seriously, then you should be getting a top quality name brand. Blue Air 650E, I think the 680i or something. They've now got whiz bang ones with all interweb enabled and all that sort of rubbish. But anyway, no, I've got the old school one. Designed and engineered in Sweden. I know all my Swedish viewers are, uh, Unfortunately, like, yeah, made in China as everything is these days. So it's an all metal case. This is one of the things you should be looking for because uh, especially if it's got the ion uh, generator inside, you uh, want to have an all metal case, but the air filters uh, play a part in that as well. But anyway, um, yeah, you can see all metal uh, chassis like this, none of that plastic rubbish and all the outer case. It's all metal. Another thing your quality ones will have are built-in uh, particulate sensors like this. They've got two sensors, I believe. One is uh, for particulate uh, matter, so it'll be like a P2.5 uh, or something like that sensor. So it actually senses all the crap in the air and it will actually have an automatic uh, mode which will then ramp up the fan and actually uh, produce more like a greater volume of air to try and uh, clean it out uh, quicker. And also, uh, I think there's like some sort of odor uh, sensor as well, because it's got a smell thing like this. Well, it tries to work out how much uh, smell and dust is in the air. And we'll go into these because uh, removing dust and removing smells are two different uh, things based on the filter. And a nice little attention to detail in uh, product design. They put a magnet inside this, so the remote control just like sticks on the side of the case anywhere you want it. And I found that the automatic mode on this particular uh, Blue Air one does work really well because if I like start, uh, you know, producing like spraying around some chemicals, soldering, smoke and things like that, it will actually uh, detect that and start to actually uh, ramp up. So you can see that it's uh, actually dropped down because I've just uh, switched the thing on. So it's just uh, getting up to speed there. Ah, ah, I'm here all week. And the other thing, of course, which is important for someone like me who shoots videos is that I don't want to have to turn off my air filter when I'm shooting videos. Like I have to do for my aircon, I've usually got to turn the aircon off, otherwise the noise from the aircon bleeds through onto uh, the audio. Has It's actually on the lowest speed at the moment, you can barely hear it. Um, I think it's rated for like uh, 36 dB, but there's a giant fan. 300 millimeter diameter fan down in there and that means it can move large volumes of air uh, like fairly silently so you know just think about uh, the amount of noise these things are going to produce because the thing with uh, air purifiers is that it's all about the volume of air like per minute or per hour that you can uh, typically exchange but this one's like nominally rated for like a 65 square meter uh, room so that means it's going to completely replace the air in, in that particular uh, room in a certain amount of time but there's no real uh, standard uh, for this but it's just like uh, comparing different models in the same uh, range from the same manufacturer um, so it's able to replace you know a large volume of air on the lowest setting so the noise doesn't really upset you so I can actually change the speed of this you can probably hear that it's really starting everything's starting to vibrate whoa there's massive volume of air coming out of that thing now. Okay, when you first come into the office or something, you turn on auto and it might go, like it might pump it out on full for like five minutes or something like that. And then I'll gradually realize that the air is pretty good. It doesn't need to do that and it'll settle down in auto mode. So that's something you should be looking for. 
Now, when it comes down to a thing that makes a filter a good filter is the actual filter itself, like duh. Now this is uh, actually the smoke stop model. You know, they're all pretty much gonna be uh, similar. So this fibrous material here is what does the filtering. They uh, fold them like this um, into deep uh, slots, just like, you know, heat sink uh, fins or something like that. It just means that the surface area down in there is much larger. They're just larger pockets like that. Uh, ultimately, you're gonna get longer life the deeper these slots are and the more surface area you get into these things. Now this one, getting a little bit worn down, you might have seen the uh, replacement light, uh, replace the filter. Blue Air recommend every six months, but you know, I've used them for a couple of years and I replaced it. I'll show you a photo here of uh, both my old previous one before I replaced that. It's like, it was pretty horrific. But yeah, how often you replace these is up to the use and the stuff it's filtering out and things like that. I should have written on here, um, but I've got the uh, tweet at the time when I changed this so I can date that. Anyway, this material is very important. Don't buy one with like uh, paper filters because paper filters, they uh, can build up like bacteria and moisture on them and uh, they're not an antibacterial material. So you can actually get mold and you know, other crap growing on there. And you don't want your air filter to then be like blowing out mold spores everywhere. So this particular one, cause these are very expensive. So this one actually uses a polypropylene uh, material in combination with uh, polyethylene as well. And it doesn't use any other glues or anything like that to hold it together. So that's what you're paying for. You're paying for a top quality, like a uh, poly put the kettle on antibacterial material. So it means that it's not gonna retain moisture and you're you're not going to get crap growing on this. And of course, this is actually a, like a paper cardboard uh, surround, but that's not the part that's doing the filtering. All the, all the important stuff is the material in here. So you definitely want antibacterial poly put the kettle on material. And of course you want a material that can actually electrostatically attract all of those particles that you've electrostatically uh, charged up with your ion generator as well. And a uh, polypropylene slash uh, polyester type material does that nicely. Now, as I said, this one's called a smoke stop filter and this is uh, the more expensive one because it's got an extra filter on the top to actually filter out uh, smells and odors and things like that. Because here is the thing with filters. If just the HEPA that uh, Polly put the kettle on, HEPA uh, filter material, can only filter out the particulate matter. It can't filter out uh, smells, odors, uh, volatile organic chemicals and all that sort of stuff. To do that, you actually need an activated carbon filter. And that's what this has, a layer of activated carbon. And no, it's not this uh, black spongy uh, filter material that you'll typically find on your soldering uh, fume extractors and stuff like that. That's actually not the thing that's doing the business. Now I won't open uh, this up, but I will show you a uh, photo. Here it is, what's behind this. And it's actually little uh, cells of activated carbon granules and these will actually absorb these carbon granules will uh, little pits of these they will actually absorb all of the odors the volatile organic chemicals the vocs in the air and things like that and they will actually suck all those up and they will eventually uh, saturate and wear out hence why another reason why you have to replace uh, these filters regularly is that not only does the uh poly put the kettle on filter material actually get clogged up with you know or dirt and grime and other you know crap that it's taking out of the air but also those activated carbon granules can actually uh, swell up and then they become less and less effective until they're practically totally useless they can't absorb any more of those uh, VOCs and other uh, odors and crap in the air. Now, Blue Air have actually uh, done a proper lab tests, measured the ozone uh, produced by this. They, they reckon that uh, the ozone actually produced inside is already at quite minuscule levels below uh, health standard limits. But they actually claim that after the air that comes out of here actually has less ozone. So it actually filters out the ozone from the air that it's actually sucking in. So that's what a quality one like this uh, claims. And I'm sure they've got like the data to uh, back that up. This is like one of the best brands on the market. So they're entirely reputable. But beware of the cheapies. Um, you just don't know. Yeah, you don't want to be producing ozone. 
And of course you have to install these the right way up. The carbon filter goes on the outside, that's why it says facing out, and your uh, actual air, HEPA air material goes on the inside. This particular one has three separate filters, they're all identical, so yeah, it's like, it really contains, oh, that one's starting to, oh, the side ones, I think I'd better start buying some, trying to get some new ones. They are quite expensive. They're like, you know, 150, they're like $50 each or something. Focus, yep, I think that's coming into focus. You can see that those little arms out there sitting in the middle, just flapping around in the breeze inside, they're mounted to little um, side arms. They're actually the high voltage uh, probe tips, which will ionize the air, uh, centered directly over the fan there. Maybe you can see the fan down the bottom perhaps. And hopefully you can see inside there, this one actually has additional points. You can see that there's one there and there's one over there as well. Now I'd love to actually do a full tear down of this thing. Unfortunately, I am defeated. Wah, 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 wah. Well, if you do know how to get into one of these babies without breaking it, do let me know. Anyway, like there's not a huge amount in there. There's a giant uh, like AC fan, so that'll be mains AC uh, fan. This one's, I think it draws up to like, I think I've measured about 80 watts on high. It's all about the effectiveness of the filters, the actual resistance of the filter material uh, itself to the air, and then how much volt, what fan pressure you actually need to actually, what air pressure you need to push it through the filter and then exchange the volume of air. It's all about the exchange of volume of air like per minute or per hour or however you want to uh, specify that. It's bigger fan you can get, the more volume you're going to be able to push with lower noise and everything else. So uh, yeah, like that's why I like a big unit like this on, uh, on casters. I'm always rolling it around the lab. And as I said, your good ones are going to have like uh, particulate uh, sensors in there that actually measure particulates in the air and then can automatically adjust but hang on, I was able to get this front panel off. So we can now see these two sens sensors. Interestingly, um, this one here is not actually drawing the air from there. It's actually taking it from the inside here. So that's better. It's the actual inlet air that's actually being sucked in uh, through the side. But I, I don't think it's neither here nor there. And I'll put up the data sheet for that sensor. And as you can see, it's a uh, gaseous sensor. It's from a company I haven't uh, heard of before. But yeah, it's specifically designed for this task to uh, detect air quality, like you know, gas concentrations in various gas and odors and things in the air quality. So uh, yeah, that's exactly what you'd expect. I believe this is a typical uh, PM 2.5 uh, laser uh, particulate sensors. So it just uh, sex senses particulate matter in the air and you can buy these as uh, off-the-shelf modules like Omra and other uh, companies make them. So I'm not sure which one this is. We've got a gas sensor, we've got a particulate sensor. And uh, these typically have like a little built-in fan to them, but of course this thing already has a fan. <laughs> so it's using the uh, circulating air inside the unit to actually push air uh, into this thing. So yeah, that's why, you know, these things typically take like a minute after you power them on. That's why uh, you saw the sensors before like show full scale when we first turned it on. These things take a while to settle down. Anyway, this gaseous sensor is rather interesting. It uses a uh, like a resistive uh, element in it to actually do the detection. But as you can see, they've actually spent quite a bit of money and they've done this properly uh, with both of these uh, detectors. And this is probably something you won't find in any of your uh, cheapies, only in your professional ones, because these aren't cheap. Oh, I was able to take that out. Looks like it's just an optical one. Doesn't look like a laser one. Yeah, you can see how it just goes through. Got a couple of lenses there and it's just uh, detecting particulate matter inside the chamber there. But anyway, hope you enjoyed that video and found it uh, useful. And um, yeah, it's worth every cent. I think the cheapies are just, ah, oh, they're almost not worth it. Like it's worth paying for decent uh, quality. So let us know if you've got um, other really top quality uh, brands out there. I think uh, aren't Philips into it and things like that. So, you know, quality companies like that really know what they're doing. So anyway, if you did find that video useful, please give it a big a thumbs up. And as always, you can discuss down below and Catch me on my library channel as well. Catch you next time. Hello.